If you remember my Dolphin Shoals video, I spent quite a bit of time whining about how it's one of the hardest tracks to learn in the entire game. Well, Cheeseland would definitely come in at a close second. It's one of the windier tracks in the game, and there are a ton of places where you can use mushrooms, which is nice if you're playing online or in Grand Prix mode, but not so nice if you're trying to figure out how to optimize a time trial run. Welcome to part 42 of Basic Training, where we're going to cover everything you need to know about Cheeseland on 150cc. As always, we're going to cover the recommended builds, mushroom strats, coin lines, and other advanced tips and tricks to help you start mastering the course. This tutorial is going to be broken down into three parts. In part one, I'm going to go over a basic version of the run that won't include any advanced strategies whatsoever and is designed to be widely reproducible so that you can easily conquer the staff ghost. In part two, I'm going to cover strategies that I use in my current personal best. And finally, in part three, I'm going to go over the world record strategies. Fair warning that this is probably going to be one of my longest time trial videos. The builds and strategies are totally different between parts one and two, and even the level one version of the run is pretty complicated to explain. Not only that, but the world record is also fairly different from my PB. So all these strats are going to take quite a bit of time to explain, but as I said, this is a really difficult course, so I think that's warranted here. With all that out of the way, let's check out Cheeseland, and I hope that you brought some nose plugs along because just like a block of fine Limburger, this course stinks. The build that I'm going to recommend for this course if you're starting out is Link, Wild Wiggler, Azure Rollers, and Paper Glider. This might seem like a pretty weird choice of build at first glance. It's got really similar stats to our usual tryhard build of Waluigi, Bitty Buggy, Azure Rollers, and Paper Glider. Actually, the speed is exactly the same, but the mini turbo slightly less. You might be wondering, if there are so many twists and turns on this track, why are we giving up free levels of mini turbo here? Well, this is one of the rare cases where we actually don't only care about speed and mini turbo, but traction or grip as well. See, Cheeseland's track basically acts like sand, similar to Dry Dry Desert, and this makes it a lot more slippery, so we actually want a build that's got higher traction as well so that we can take better lines. Now once you've gotten a handle on the level 1 version of the run, I'm going to suggest for the first and probably only time that you switch to a baby build with Baby Peach, Bitty Buggy, Azure Rollers, and Paper Glider, but only if your soft drifting is on point. It's got the highest acceleration and mini turbo stats in the entire game, and there are a ton of places where we'll be able to take advantage of this. In fact, my personal best with the Link build is around the mid 150s, but as we'll see later in the video, my personal best with the Baby Peach build is in the low 148s, more than two seconds faster. But that's enough about the builds, let's check out the track. I should warn you that pretty much everything I'm about to tell you about this track should be filed under easier said than done. Case in point, as soon as the run starts, we're going to be doing a left drift to build up a super mini turbo while grabbing the first three coins. Getting the right alignment here can actually be quite a bit more tricky than it looks. What I suggest is after starting the left drift, immediately start holding right on the joystick to widen your drift angle, and then just before you get to the coin, start holding a hard left. As soon as you build up the super mini turbo, release into a right drift while grabbing the third coin. Finally, after grabbing the third coin, build up a mini turbo and release. Like I said, quite a bit trickier than it looks to do all this properly, but thankfully if you miss a coin or two, it's not a huge deal because there are more than enough coins on this track for you to make up the difference. Now after releasing the mini turbo, wait until you come up on this little dune here, and then just before you get to it, start a right drift and then hold left on the joystick to widen your drift angle. It's possible to build up a super mini turbo around this turn, but to keep things simple, I opt to go for just a regular mini turbo here. Now the timing of when you start this drift is actually kind of important. You don't want to start it too late, otherwise you'll go off the dune like a ramp, which gives you less time to build up the mini turbo, and also forces you to take a bad line. But you also don't want to drift too early, otherwise you won't have enough room to make the turn. The trick is basically trying to time your drift so that when you land, you land right on top of the dune. Once you release that mini turbo, make your way to the left hand side of the track and align yourself toward the coin. If you go inside the little pothole here, you can actually trick off it and grab the coin. But that sets us up for a pretty bad line, so what we want to do instead, is wait until just after we pass the edge of it and then do a hop into a left drift while grabbing the coin. Again, the timing on this can be quite a bit trickier than it looks. If you hop too early, you'll land inside of the pothole and get a bunch of air time, which is really slow. And if you hop too late, then you'll just fall in. After grabbing the coin and starting your left drift, we're going to do something a little bit counterintuitive here. On this long left turn, we've got more than enough time to build up an ultra mini turbo. But instead of doing that, we're going to build up a regular mini turbo, release, and immediately start another left drift to build up a super mini turbo before the orange boost ramp. In this version of the run, I trick off the pothole and grab the coin, but you can just drift around the inside of the pothole like you'll see me do on lap 2, because again, there are more than enough coins on this track that you don't need to grab them all. 
Now why do we want to do this weird mini turbo into super mini turbo strategy in the first place? Well, it all comes down to boost cannibalization. With this build, an ultra mini turbo boost will last for about 2.8 seconds. If you start a drift after hopping over the pothole like I suggested, then you won't be able to build up the ultra mini turbo until you get to the second pothole. And why is this a problem? Well, if you look at how long it takes for you to get to the orange boost ramp from the second pothole, it takes about 1.8 seconds if you have an ultra mini turbo boost. And because the boosts don't stack, you're actually wasting almost a third of your ultra mini turbo this way. And this eating up of the ultra mini turbo is what I mean when I say boost cannibalization. The reason our strategy is able to avoid boost cannibalization is because our super mini turbos with this build only last for around 1.8 seconds. Not only that, but we'll actually be building up the super mini turbo right around the time we get to the second pothole again. Which is awesome because that means that we'll be hitting the orange boost ramp at pretty much the exact same time as when our super mini turbo runs out. Now not only is this a more efficient way to manage our mini turbos, but what actually makes the strategy faster is that first mini turbo, which we wouldn't be getting if we waited to build up the ultra mini turbo. Phew. I told you this was going to be a long video, didn't I? Okay, so when going off the orange boost ramp, we want to trick and hold down the drift button so that when we land, we'll start drifting immediately. Then we basically want to hold down a hard right through this whole hairpin turn to build up an ultra mini turbo. Now instead of tricking off the glider, we want to just drive straight off it. I go over this in my pro strats for ramp and glider tricks video, but the quality of that video is kinda jank, so I'll just explain what's going on here. When you trick off a glider ramp, your speed gets reset to a fixed value before giving you the boost from the trick. As you might guess, this fixed speed is slower than the ultra mini turbo boost, so tricking off the ramp here actually ends up costing you time. I haven't mentioned this much in my videos, but you also want to make sure and try and do a low glider here. I go over this in my advanced strats video, but basically the way you do this is by waiting until just after the glider starts coming out, and then mashing the hop button. This will cause your glider to come out lower, which gets you to the ground more quickly. I pretty much do this on every glider ramp in the game. After this, the rest of the lap pretty much plays out like you'd expect. Build up a super mini turbo around this next turn while grabbing the two coins, and then build up mini turbos around the following two turns. To avoid the chain chomp at the end of the lap, move over to the left hand side of the track and then just do what we did on the first pothole and hop over it to do a right drift. For this last left turn, you want to make sure to delay the start of your drift slightly, otherwise you'll run into the spinning boost thing which will cause you to take a really wide line. Other than that though, build up a mini turbo and then trick off the two ramps to finish up the lap. Lap 2 is generally pretty similar to lap 1, except for the beginning. After the first sharp left turn, immediately start a right drift and try to keep a wide drifting line here. Once you get to the big block of cheese, just shroom through the shortcut. You should have enough time to build up a super mini turbo, so release and do a left drift out of the shortcut. Just for completeness, I should probably point out that we want to take this turn just like before with a mini turbo and a super mini turbo before the orange boost ramp. Lap 3 is pretty much the same as lap 2, except for one key difference. You may have noticed that we didn't use a mushroom on lap 1. This is because we can actually take a pretty nifty little shortcut with this extra mushroom, but only on lap 3. Once you pull up to the chain chomp turn, instead of hopping over the pothole like we did on laps 1 and 2, we want to actually build up a super mini turbo and trick off the pothole. Then, start a left drift and shroom through the off-road. You should be able to build up a mini turbo by the time you get to the glider ramp, so release and trick at the same time, and then just hug the wall to take a super tight line before finishing your run. Before checking out the full run, let's quickly recap the coin lines. We're going to grab our first three coins from the very first turn. We're going to grab one more from the left hand side of the mushroom cut and then one more from the first pothole. Next we're going to grab one coin from the second pothole and another from right after the orange boost ramp. We'll grab two more from the first turn after the glider and then you can pick any one of the three coins at the chain chomp turn for your last coin, but it's the most efficient to grab the first one. And that's it for the level 1 version of the run, let's take a look at a full time trial demonstration to see how all these strats are put together.
Okay, we finally made it to level two. Like I mentioned earlier, this version of the run is very different from the level one version of the run. Case in point, this is probably one of the only times where I'll suggest that if you're good at soft drifting, you should really be using a baby build here. This setup builds up mini turbos like there's no tomorrow, and we're actually gonna take advantage of this as soon as the run begins to build up an ultra mini turbo around the first turn. Then we're gonna start a right drift, hold a left on the joystick to widen our drift angle a bit, and... All right, so what the hell just happened there? To be honest, I'm not 100% sure why this happens, but basically it's possible to take the shortcut in such a way that if you hop as soon as you land, you won't lose any of your speed, and you can practically make it through the entire shortcut with just two hops. Now the way that you have to take this shortcut is fairly specific in that you pretty much need to land as close to the right hand wall of the shortcut as possible. Any further left than I am here and your momentum will get totally killed. It's not super hard to learn though, since all you have to do is make sure to approach the shortcut in such a way that when you get to the off-road, you're in line with this big rock to the right of the shortcut. Problem is though, that we don't typically have enough speed to make it fully through the shortcut, and when we come out of it, we'll be going a little bit more slow than we'd like. So rather than hop over the pothole to grab the coin like before, we're actually gonna trick off the pothole. And this is the next place where we're gonna take advantage of the ridiculous mini turbo stat of the Baby Peach setup by building up two super mini turbos before the orange boost ramp instead of just the mini turbo and a super mini turbo strat that we did before. It should be pointed out that like in level one, one of the main reasons that this saves time is because it avoids boost cannibalization. However, even if boost cannibalization were not something we needed to worry about, two super mini turbos is still faster than one ultra mini turbo. Once we land from the orange boost ramp, we're going to build up an ultra mini turbo just like before. But once again, we're going to take advantage of the baby build here to immediately start a left drift, build up a mini turbo, and then do some glider vectoring off the ramp. It is actually possible to do something like this with the link build, but with that build, it's actually really hard to get. Whereas with the baby peach build, it's more or less free. Just like before, make sure to also do low glider by mashing the hot button after your glider starts coming out. You don't really need to mash the hot button, you only need to press it once, but I just mash so that I don't have to worry about the timing. After landing from the glider, hug the left hand side of the turn just like before, only now we want to build up an ultra mini turbo. You might have to hold the drift button for an uncomfortably long amount of time, but it's definitely worth it to do. However, this will cause you to be in a pretty bad line for the next right turn, but all you have to do to get around that is do a right hop before the right drift. The rest of lap 1 plays out just like before. Lap two is similar to lap one, except that what I do is build up an ultra mini turbo around the first turn, immediately start a right drift, and then just shroom through the first shortcut. Really, once you get good enough at doing that shortcut without a mushroom, you should be trying to do it shroomless every time, but I'm just not that consistent at it yet. If you do opt to use a mushroom, then make sure to try and build up an ultra mini turbo before coming out of the cut. If you do, then you'll basically be in some form of mini turbo boost for this entire portion of the track, which is just awesome. Other than that, the rest of lap 2 and all of lap 3 play out the same as before, except that on lap 3 we do the mushroom cut at the very end of the run, just like in the level 1 version. The coin lines are pretty much the same between levels 1 and 2, but since we're taking the shroomless shortcut on lap 1, we need to grab 2 coins from the chain chomp turn, instead of 1. Now let's take a look at my full PB to see how all these strats are put together in a full run.
All right, coming into the home stretch for this video, all that's left is to talk about the world record strategies. There are only a few differences, but they're all pretty major. Their lap one is pretty much the same as what I do, but you know that shroomless shortcut that we did? Well, the world record does that on every lap. And since they're saving a mushroom each time, this allows them to use their mushrooms around the hairpin turn after the orange boost ramp, which saves some additional time. However, this causes them to have less time to build up the ultra mini turbo around that turn, so they opt not to go for glider vectoring strats on laps two and three. The other major difference between what I do and what the world record does is at the end of laps one and two, rather than trick off the two ramps like I do, they trick off the first ramp and then land in a hard left drift off the second ramp. When they land, they then start holding right on the joystick to widen the drift angle and then use the pothole as a little ramp to cut the first left hand turn. Just like the first shroomless shortcut, if you have a really good angle and you hop as soon as you land, it's possible to cut this whole turn in such a way that you basically don't lose any speed. It's also possible to do this with the Link Wiggler build, albeit with a super mini turbo instead of an ultra mini turbo, but I really don't recommend it because if you fail, it costs an insane amount of time. And hitting it without getting any slowdown is, at least for me, incredibly difficult and inconsistent. It should be pointed out that with the baby build, even if you fail the cut, as long as you have an ultra mini turbo, you should still be able to take the cut in such a way that it saves time. Problem is though that if you do mess up the cut with a baby build, it's obviously going to be a lot slower than if you hit it without any slowdown. And what ends up happening if you slow down here is that this screws with the setup for the next shortcut, regardless of whether or not you opt to do the shroomless version. This is the reason why I avoid going for the shortcut in my personal best. The last difference between the world record run and my personal best is the final glider. They intentionally bump into the wall a little bit to help them buy some extra time to build up a super mini turbo and then just use the super mini turbo boost to finish up the lap instead of tricking off the glider like I do. And that's everything you need to know about Cheeseland on 150cc. Even though my Dolphin Shoals time is further away from the world record than my Cheeseland time, I'd say that Cheeseland is the more difficult course by far. With Dolphin Shoals, the difficulty is pretty much entirely contained to the eel section and the last glider, whereas for this track, the entire first half of the course has the potential to end your run, especially if you're going for any advanced strategies. All in all though, this is a pretty rewarding course to get better at, and hey, if nothing else, the soundtrack is a banger. Before we close out the video, I just want to say that this one took a really long time to put together. You might have noticed that my personal best is actually pretty different from both the level 1 version of the run and the world record. And it took quite a bit of experimentation to actually come up with the strats that I used in my level 2 run because I needed to find something that was both consistent and much faster than the level 1 version of the run. So if you found this tutorial helpful, it'd be a huge help if you dropped a like and a comment. This not only lets me know that you're enjoying the content, but it also lets YouTube know to recommend my videos to other racers who might be looking for tips and tricks on how to improve. Also, I do release a new video every week, so if you find yourself coming back to these tutorials time and time again, please consider becoming a subscriber and hitting the notification bell if you want to stay up to date with my latest content. Thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to do some basic training, and as always, I will see you in the next video.